Welcome back, fellow travelers. Previously, we rediscovered the nano world and learned about its history. Our epic journey will continue today. Welcome back to the Nano Odyssey. In today's episode, we will take a look at what a nano scientist's mind thinks about when trying to solve a problem or find a solution at the atomic level. Once you know what the next hurdle is, you don't just stop if the solution isn't straightforward. You try to approach the problem from different angles and eventually find a solution that may even surprise you. It's time to learn about the different approaches towards nanotechnology. We all know by now that a nanometer is a billion times smaller than a meter and that is a really really small length scale. But exactly how small is it to give you some perspective? The width of a human hair on an average is 10,000 nanometers. And the radius of an atom is widely accepted as one angstrom or 0.1 nanometers. When you talk about anything in the vast realm of nanoscience, it is essentially made up of building blocks only 10 times larger than an atom, which is the fundamental building block of everything in our universe. Nanotechnology, nanoscience, and all the allied tools and techniques of these fields are the cornerstones of new materials, devices and entities that have at least one of their three spatial dimensions within a limit of 1 to 100 nanometers. But how do you get to such a small size of working material? Do you break down bigger stuff, like sculpting something out of stone? Or do you put together smaller pieces to make something larger, like completing a jigsaw puzzle? Well, it turns out, you can do both to get to the nano realm. These two approaches are called the top-down and bottom-up approaches, respectively. We will now discuss them in some detail. In the top-down approach, starting materials of an order typically in the micrometer, millimeter, or centimeter size range, are broken down using a variety of techniques until the average size of the smaller units thus formed is roughly as expected in the nano range. Some of the common techniques used in top-down synthesis of nanomaterials are as follows. 1. Mechanical milling, where a large and heavy sphere or spheres are tumbled and shaken with the starting materials to break them down using physical force. 2. Lithography, where electron beams or light beams with assistance of certain blocking materials called resists, are used to very precisely carve starting materials to the desired size and shape. This technique grants very specific control over all parameters of the process. 3. Laser ablation techniques, wherein the staring material is generally submerged in a liquid and is subjected to laser pulses. The material vaporizes due to the heat of the laser, and the broken down particulate matter immediately cools in the liquid. By finely controlling the pulse duration and wavelength of the laser, fine control over the product is possible. 4. Arc discharge techniques, in which the star tin materials take the form of electrodes in an electrolyte. A high voltage is applied, which causes ions to move through the solution, and the gradual breakdown of the electrode material leads to the production of the desired nanomaterials. 5. There have also been some reports wherein the modified tips of atomic force microscopes, AFM, or scanning probe microscopes, SPM, which are generally only used to study nanomaterials, have actually been used to synthesize or modify nanomaterials. Top-down methods are very easy adapt to a variety of synthesis conditions, production requirements, scalability issues and equipment, and are thus considered ideal for mass production, without too much loss in quality. These techniques perform robustly even in non-laboratory conditions, and are thus favored for large-scale manufacturing processes. In the bottom-up approach, starting materials are generally chemical reagents that are allowed to react in a variety of experimental conditions until the average size of the units formed by the assembly of atoms, molecules or ions is roughly as expected in the nano range. 
Some of the common techniques used in bottom-up synthesis of nanomaterials are as follows. 1. Sol gel processes are a time-tested and common class of procedures where a set of reactants are mixed in solution form. With proper and calibrated parameters like pH, temperature, volumetric and molar ratios etc. and are heated to allow the liquid to evaporate, allowing the reactant molecules to assemble into the desired nanomaterials under controlled conditions. 2. Reduction and oxidation are fundamental concepts and can be readily applied in the bottom-up synthesis of nanomaterials as well. Oxidation generally means addition of an oxygen atom or removal of electrons from a species, and reduction can be broadly explained as addition of a hydrogen atom or addition of electrons to a species. When either of these processes are applied to ions floating around in a solution, controlled synthesis of nanomaterials becomes possible. 3. Missilization is an innovative technique which involves the use of amphiphilic surfactant molecules to isolate charged species to then form assembled nanostructures. An amphiphilic molecule has two parts an uncharged non-polar part that has more affinity for organic solvents and a charged polar part that has more affinity for polar solvents. When this concept is employed in the case of charged ions in organic solvents, the amphiphilic molecules surround the ions, with the charge part pointing inward toward the ion, forming an insulating spherical coating around it, thus effectively simultaneously creating and isolating nanostructures. 4. Self-assembly of atomic or ionic entities can be brought about by various chemical reactions and physical processes in a programmed fashion to achieve specific sizes and shapes of the resultant nanostructures. 5. Directed assembly techniques using catalysts and specific substrates or templates is a newly emergent and very promising area of research in bottom-up nanomaterial synthesis. Bottom-up methods are very easy to adapt to a variety of synthesis conditions and can be modified to suit many innovative synthesis protocols and are thus considered ideal for research purposes with complete control over all aspects of the process. These techniques have yet to perform robustly on a large scale in non-laboratory conditions and are thus still not widely adapted for public purposes. Even as we discuss the various approaches to synthesizing nanomaterials, the inspiration and ideas for new materials require innate creativity, vision, and the willingness to think outside the box of conventional wisdom to tell us whether something is possible or not. That is actually the beauty of the unknown. The things we think are impossible are nothing but dreams of the future. This is Mr. O signing off until we meet again on the journey that we call the Nano Odyssey. In the next episode, we will take a look at the properties of nanomaterials. Hey, I am Miss Keen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And for latest update hit the bell icon. Until then keep exploring.